two other people that I really don't remember much about it. And also, uh, there were some uh, it's not as as you And so I wasn't that pumped up about the picture anyway, except that I recognized it was an extremely well done picture. But I was so curious. That now why, be, why did they do that? Oh, because sometimes they're stupid. I mean, they're just, you know, terminal stupidity is what we call it. And I was so mad that I, I really, when I saw the interview set up and I said, oh, and, and when the other thing, I didn't really um, uh, tell you the, the other thing, uh, that they gave us six minutes to talk to these three women, but I don't think they were right. Yeah, it's, it's really not fair to ask you. Well, it's not fair to conditions. them, it's not fair to anybody. Not fair to anybody. And you end up, um, you know, not Take them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> are we still setting? No, you're wrong. All right, Mimi, officially we are now starting. <laughs> Welcome to Dallas. It's Thank nice you. to have you here. Well, it's nice to be here. And I must start off by saying how much I enjoyed the film. Very thrilling, suspenseful picture. Well, I'm glad you think so. Should do well. Should do well. We're hoping. And, of course, I have seen, uh, well, I saw Gung Ho, and I saw uh, Night Street, and, um, uh, and you had very good roles in those pictures. But I feel, and I wonder if you agree, that this picture is, is going to be a big breakthrough for you. Well, I think there's no denying the fact that this is, um, I guess, my most showcase role to date. And it's the kind of role that, if the film does well and is well accepted that, you know, could, could make a real difference. Are you the buzz in Hollywood, as they say? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> I've, been, I've been just going around and working, so if they're buzzing, um, I don't know about it yet. <laughs> we can I, hope. <laughs> right. um, in reading, and then what you said last night on stage, Obviously, Ridley Scott, the director, looked at many women for this role. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to know what you dressed like and what you did the first time you went in to read this role for Ridley. Well, the first time I read, um, it was interesting. I went in and I, I actually read for both parts, Claire and Ellie. So I tried to dress in between, something that wasn't too elegant but wasn't too casual. Um, it, it's kind of an odd position when you're going in to read for two such very different characters, but at that point I, they re really weren't sure what direction they were going in. So, uh, so I went in, I read for both, and it went pretty well. And then I heard a while later that they had found somebody they really thought was perfect for Ellie. And I thought, that, okay. Uh, I really didn't hear anything for a couple of months. And when I did get called, it was a pleasant surprise, and they said, definitely, we want you to come in to read for Claire, just Claire. I thought, okay, it's time to pull out the stops. <laughs> so, um, are you familiar with a designer called Azadine Alaya? Not really. I wore some of his clothes in the film. They're very, they're very body conscious, but very elegant at the same time. Everything is covered. It just stays very close to the body. And I had a black dress of his, and I just thought, well, I may look overdressed, but I'm going to wear it, because it, it, I felt that it would be appropriate for Claire. And uh, so I had my black stockings and heels and my black dress and went in looking as elegant as I could. And I don't think that's obviously the reason I got the part, but imagery helps. And I, I knew when I walked in that Ridley looked and recognized, yes, this is something that Claire would wear. This is a look that she would have. And that can't hurt. Your hair is different in the film from what it is now. When you read for Ridley, how was your hair? It was about this length, maybe even a little bit longer and darker. And uh, when I did get the part, this was something we had talked about. He had a very specific look that he wanted. And because um, so much of the film takes place at night, he wanted a lot of uh, blonde highlights woven into my hair that would pick up light. And uh, 
so we, working together with Anthony Clavet, designed the shorter cut and the blonde highlighting. And the shorter my hair is, the wavier it is. So basically, they just took advantage of that and uh, crunched it every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Did he tell you right then and there, after the second reading, that you had the role? No. Um, they rarely ever do that. Uh, after that second reading, I knew from talking to my agent that it, it had gone very well and that Ridley was leaning very strongly in my direction. But we did end up uh, going to a screen test and uh, found out after that. Did you test then with Tom Berenger? Yes. Yes, I did. Did you know him before that? We had met once, years ago, um, reading together for Body Heat. And that was the only, the only time we'd ever met. The chemistry between the two of you is really wonderful. Uh, was that, is that just a kind of natural thing that evolved, or did you really have to work at it? Well, it's an interesting thing because, um, you know, obviously actors are, are, are constantly portraying love affairs with people that, you know, they're not involved with and not necessarily even attracted to. But even within that framework, some pairings work and others don't. It's just an interesting thing. You see two actors on screen and you say, no, it's not happening. And two others, it's steam all over the place, even though nothing went on. And I think this was one of the lucky pairings in that the chemistry did work. And it wasn't something that we had to really sort of strive for. Um, it just worked. And you can, you can feel it. You, you sort of know when it's working. And, uh, you know, this is somebody that, while you're not shooting, you're sitting around the set just sort of shooting the whatever and cracking jokes and really just being pals. And then all of a sudden, you're shooting the scene and, and this whole different atmosphere is created. It's always, it's always fascinating to me because it's, it's a very delicate, very delicate thing that happens. It is, and as you say, on screen, it doesn't take an audience but about 30 seconds to detect it's working or it's not. Exactly. Yeah, the audiences maybe can't explain it, but they certainly can they feel certainly it. They certainly can. And when it's not working, you know, the characters kiss and the audience is like, oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> when your husband, Tom Cruise, was making Legend, did you get to know Ridley at that time? No, um, I didn't really know Tom at that time. Oh, I, you didn't? I knew of him, but we, we weren't dating at the time. Uh, we didn't actually start dating until after he shot Top Gun. How did you meet him then? We met at a dinner party. Through friends? Mm hmm just through friends. Yeah, and was there an instant attraction? or? Um, I guess so. I mean, I, you know, has sometimes you just meet somebody and you like them right away. And we, we did like each other right away and started dating, and that was kind of it. And from the time that you met until you married was how long? I guess about a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Does it ever cross your mind that maybe you and Tom will do a movie together sometime? Sure. I think that's something we'd like to do. It's really a question of material. If the right, if the right material came along, we would definitely do it. It's, but you never uh, said things like, we, we want to keep our marriage and our careers all separate. You never got into that sort of discussion. Not really. Yeah. Yeah. So what is next for you, Mimi? Well, I've read a couple of things that I'm interested in. Uh, most of my time at the moment is taken up doing this. And so once, once the promotion aspect is over with and the film is opened, um, then I'll go back and sort of pick up with these things and see how fast we can get one of them going. Well, I bet, I bet you're going to have offers you don't even know about yet. That would be okay. <laughs> Do you feel that the, that the time has come? Well, I, you know, it's hard to say. Obviously, this is the type of role and the type of film that, that could have a great effect on me professionally. It could result in offers and a lot of attention. But I found that there really are no guarantees, so you kind of just have to wait and see what happens. You know, we would obviously hope that that would happen. Uh, so we'll see. Okay. 
I've enjoyed talking with you, Mimi. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Nice interview. Thank it's you. Nice. Shut up. Oh, go ahead. I'm just trying. Oh. You know what it is? It's your chair. But uh, give me a bunch of two-shot reactions. Okay. You can say anything. We're not recording, so. No, was, there's a couple of moments that I feel are just so tender. Um, when he came in the middle of the night, when, when I had been making dinner, mm -hmm. and he didn't show up, and then he came later, and we're sitting in front of the fireplace, and he's so tired. I just felt... Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know if you see a lot of scenes like that mm -hmm. where it's just sort of quiet and tender. And I felt that you, you look at his face and your heart just breaks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Really, really sweet work. Uh huh. Yeah. Is he easy to work with? Yeah, very, mm -hmm. very. I've interviewed him a couple of times. He's very nice to work with in an in, in an interview. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm No, he's a real professional, real hardworking. Good mm -hmm. question, Barbara. Okay. <laughs> and then you just start to answer. It doesn't matter if you say the same thing or not. Okay. Mimi, do you feel that this role is going to be a breakthrough in your career? Well, we certainly hope. Okay. Uh, you still rolling on the two? Stay on the two now till yeah, I tell you. It's a different. Yeah, okay. All right. The first time you went to read for Ridley Scott, how did you dress and what did you do? Well, let me tell you. Okay, uh, the same thing. Yeah. All right. And a little okay. reaction, a little farther along as you go and will give me the very excellent shots. Okay. Um, all right. When you went the second time, did you do the same thing? No, the second time I pulled out all the stops wear something completely different. Okay. Okay, good. Okay. All right. Um, when your husband Tom Cruise was making Legend, is that when you first met Ridley Scott? No, I actually didn't really know Tom at that time. Okay. Let's do that one more time All right. and shake your head no, I think, before you kind of Instead of you gestured yes then. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, saying no, okay. When your husband Tom Cruise was making Legend with the director Ridley Scott, is that when you first met Ridley? No, I, uh, I actually wasn't dating Tom at that time. Okay, all right. How did you meet then? Oh, let me, let me redo that, okay. How did you and Tom meet? We met at a friend's house at a dinner party. Okay. A little reaction from this angle in another Okay, question. let me do another question. Okay. Do you and Tom ever talk about or think about doing a picture together? Yeah, I mean, that, that is something we'd like to do at some time. Really depends on the material, though. Okay. There is a really wonderful chemistry between you and Tom Berenger. Is this something you had to work at, or was it just there from the beginning? Well, I think you find that with actors, certain pairings work, certain pairings don't work. And when the chemistry's there, um, it's not something you really have to work at. Okay. Um. When you did the screen test with Tom Berenger, had you ever met him before? Once years ago, reading for the big chill. Was it the chill or uh, body heat that you read for? Oh. You said chill. That doesn't matter, but is it, it was heat? body heat. It was body heat. Okay, fine. <laughs> I just Stuck wanted. On the big chill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I think now we. Uh, what do you need? Uh, some more reactions? Thing. I don't care. What do you like to do when you're not working, making films? I like to read. I like to cook. I like to work out. Play tennis. That sort of thing. I'm big on exercise. And uh, should I say something to make you laugh? Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Bowling. Mm. 
All sorts of things. Going to the movies is high. High on the list. I like to see uh, pretty much everything that comes out. Uh-huh. And uh, rent movies, watch old movies on, you know, on tape. Pretty much anything I can get my hands on. <laughs> Take it, Jackie. Tell the joke that you said heard on the set. A joke that I heard? I can't repeat any of the jokes that I heard on the set. That should do it, shouldn't it? Yes, sir.